already told me Jesus already told me everything's gonna be alright oh Jesus already told me everything's gonna be alright oh Jesus already told me Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Come on and give God some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and tell them you love them. Hallelujah. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Reading from St. John, the third chapter, the 16th verse, it says, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. I have read St. John, the third chapter, the 16th through the 21st verse. Let us pray. Oh, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, oh, God. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave his life so that we might have right to the tree of life. Now, God, I ask right now that you give us what we stand in need of right now, oh, God. And, yes, we need to hear a word from you. God, I ask right now, oh, God, that if there's anyone that don't know you, that this will be the moment and time that they will give their heart and life to Jesus Christ, that they will cry out, what must I do to be saved? And we will be ready to say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And today you and your house shall be saved. God, we thank you. We thank you for the sun rising and for the sun setting. We thank you that you touched us this morning and you woke us up and you sent us on our way in our right mind. God, we thank you. We thank you. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. You are worthy to be praised. And most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave his life on God, God's heel for all humanity. God, we thank you. 
that we now can have a right relationship with God. And yes, call heaven our home. God, I thank you for what you have done. I am thank you for what you're about to do. And yes, I still have great expectation for the future. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on and give God some praise. God is good. And he is worthy to be praised. Uh, if you have your Bibles or your electronic devices, I'm going to ask you to turn to 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. That's 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. I'm going to read the 19th through the 21st verse. Learning to let go in 2024, how to leave the house. Again, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 19 through 21. And it reads, so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Seraphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12th and Elijah passed by and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. And said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. I've read 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 19 through 21, learning to let go in 2024, how to leave the house. There, when we start talking about this thing of how to leave the house, the house normally when we look at houses today, when we look at your homes today, we talk about comfortable places. Places of comfort where you go home and you relax for most of us. Most of you have a, a couch or a seat or a chair in your living room that is just for you. You sit there every day. It is comfortable. Most of you have a side of the bed that you lay on. It, it is just comfortable. Most of you have the, the things you want in, in your cupboards because you, you know what you like to eat and to draw down because it's a place of comfort. It is your home. And we have to learn how spiritually to leave home when God calls. So here we find the example of the prophet Elisha. His father is Seraphat. He is a prosperous landowner. So again, Elisha had everything you could imagine. He had wealth in that day, which means land. Land is where you could grow your crop and you, you could feed your family. So he was considered probably to be wealthy. So Elisha had everything that he could want from this world. He, he's working for his family on his family land, and he's plowing with the oxen. And here, here comes Elijah. And Elijah comes by, and in verse 19, he drops his mantle before him. Elisha, Elisha sitting on the 12th of the oxen. And he then begins to say that he's going to follow after Elijah. We got to understand something that even we see here in the text that God blesses not only Elijah, he sends Elijah to Elisha, but also Elisha is now willing to go, to go and follow him. He left the oxen and he, he ran after Elijah. The Bible says he ran after him. The reality is when we all get saved, when we truly have had an encounter with the living God, most of us start off running. Most of, we, of us start off witnessing and, and praising God for what he has done, but there's something that happens in life. 
that something that begins as life and life things hit us as we go through trials and tribulations, we begin to slow down and get comfortable. We get comfortable in sitting in a certain pew in the church. We get comfortable with just doing enough. And we forget to stop and we stop running for God and it goes and it returns into a slow trot. Just doing enough to say that you are a so-called Christian. Just doing enough with your time, your talent, and your treasure. And then we become church folk instead of believers and disciples for the one true living God. Letting our light so shine that men may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. We slow down. We don't run anymore. So I'm checking yourself as we move out of the comforts of our house. You must learn how to run when God calls you. And I, the preacher is not the only one called in the church. Because if God has saved you, he's given you, a, he's given you another chance, then yes, you are called. You are called to do a work for God. You are called to do his will. Ministering to your family, your neighborhood, your home, mentoring somebody, loving on somebody. God has called you to do something, to be a blessing to somebody else. He left the oxen and he ran after Elijah. But he didn't ask. He said he stopped for a moment and, and to leave properly. He said, let me go back and kiss my mother and my father. Elijah knew how to respect understanding that he probably will never return to the family business. That now that God has called me. See, that tells us that, yes, there's some things that we need to also let go as we leave the comforts of our house. As we leave it, there's some things we need to just let go of. Because God has called us to a new nature. Old things are past, supposed to pass away, and behold, all things are supposed to become new. There's some things you're just not going to want to do anymore. So Elisha, he, he says, please bid me. Let me go call mom, kiss mom, and kiss dad. Show my respect, which is a proper thing to do. It's a proper thing to do. There's nothing wrong with it. But he's understanding that I can't stay here no more because God has called me to something else. Some of you are sitting in the same position that you've been in for too many years and for too long. God has called you to something else, but you haven't moved. It's time to kiss mama and daddy so you know it's time to move to the next level in God. But the reality is you, we, we don't do that. We get comfortable in the house. We find the lazy boy and we kick up our feet and we sit back in front of the television because we're comfortable and God has never called for us to be comfortable in him. The Bible says Jesus didn't even have a place to lay his head. He couldn't be comfortable. In his three years of ministry, he traveled about doing God's will and then went to God, Gotha's hill for you and for me. Not comfortable. The Garden of Gethsemane, not comfortable because he knew what he was about to go through. He said, let this cup pass over me, but no, 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 not my will, but thine be done. The reality is he's sitting there, so let me go back. Let me do what's right. Let me kiss mom and dad. But I know that I'm leaving, and I won't see them again. And he said again, and Elijah told him, he put them to the test. He says, go. Go back again. Really trying to figure out where Elisha's heart was. The question then comes to you, where is your heart? For where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be also in Matthew 6, 21. Where's your heart? Is your heart built around the things of this world? Is it built around your title or your degree? Is it built, about, built around your standing in society or your name? 
But once God calls you, you enter under his name. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. You're supposed to become Christ-like. That means you desire to be like Christ, to love like him, to love thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love thy neighbor as you love yourself. The nature is supposed to change. So where's your heart? Elijah sends him back. Elijah sends Elisha back. He says, go back. And in verse 21, we find out where Elisha's heart is. Yes, he goes back. But when he goes back, he makes sure he, he, he slays, he kills the oxen. He boils it up. He says, this ain't my job anymore. <laughs> my job now is to live for Jesus, to do God's will, to bless somebody else. This is not my job anymore. This was my family's job. This was my inheritance and family. But now I have an inheritance in Jesus. No longer will I till this tough ground. Hallelujah. God has given me a new ground to be a blessing for the people of Israel. And for over 60 years, he was a prophet in Israel. He did over 32 miracles for the people of Israel. God had blessed him. That's over. He burns. He kills the oxen. He boils it, and then he blesses somebody else. Hallelujah. Where your heart is, we see it right here. He blesses those that had worked with him. Say, come, come, come eat. Hallelujah. Come eat. God has called us all to serve, to do his will, to bless somebody else in time, talent, and treasure. That's what God has called us to do. That's why we come together as a church to bind our resources together and use our talents to be a blessing to this community right here in Ash, on Ash Cake Road, right here in Ashland. God has called us to do that, to bless those that don't have, because that's where our heart is, the downtrodden, the widowed, the orphaned, God has called us to be a blessing to them that they may see Jesus in us and cry out, what must I do to be saved? He kills it. He blesses others. He feeds them. <laughs> As a prophet, he's going to feed them with the word of God. <laughs> Just like in John 21, 15 and 70, Jesus said, feed my sheep. God has called him. Now the question is, that where God has called you? And the Bible says, then he arose and went with Elijah and ministered to the minister. <laughs> then ministered to the minister. To be a blessing to him. And he was with Elijah for seven years as he learned. As he learned from Elijah how to take care of the man of God and what the man of God is supposed to do, how to live righteously, how to do God's will, how to keep God first. So it wasn't instant that he just took over. I know we live in an instant society and everybody wants to be the boss right away, but no, you need to learn too. That's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to go and study. Called preparation. <laughs> Learning to let go in 2024. You got to get out of the house. And many of us have built a house of comfort in our life. You only do what's comfortable for you. And God's calling you to come out your comfort zone. He's called you for that purpose, not to be comfortable, but to do his will, to step out on faith and see God work. And when we do that, 
God will bless you. And I'm not talking about money. I ain't talking about earthly things, but God will bless you. He will use you for his glory that people will be saved, delivered, and set free. But you got to step out of your house of comfort. You got to leave home. <laughs> and here Elisha gives us a template of how to leave home. Learning to let go in 2024. My friend, my friend, I'm pleading with you. I'm challenging you today. This is a challenging message because many of us have built houses, safe places. And in the olden days, there weren't as many safe places. And what I mean by that, because if you go back about 30, 40 years, even in our very own nation, there was nothing for grandma to come out the house. Say, y'all ain't going to make all that noise on my street or in front of my house. And she was respected in the community for it. Everyone loved her because she was straight and she understood that, hey, you don't need to act like this. Because she did it also in love. She knew all the kids' names. Called your house before you got home to get you in trouble with your mama and your daddy. But you needed it. She was doing it in love. She was protecting the community. And unfortunately, today, we get so comfortable in our house, we don't want to say nothing for, to nobody about Jesus. Nothing. We'll see anything going on, but we won't step in. And I understand about being careful. I get it. Being safe and protected. I get it. But what happens to the scripture? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you go do it in love and bless somebody else, then God says he'll protect you. For Christ I live, for Christ I die. I'm challenging you today. You got to remove yourself from this comfort that you've created for yourself in your home, in your house, because it's comfortable. And today, more than ever in 2024, people need to see the Christ in you. And you can't sit behind your closed doors. We can't sit here in this church and demonstrate Jesus. We got to go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. And how do we do that? Not just with our verbal, not just with our talk but with our walk, that they see Jesus in us and make a change in their life. I'm challenging you today. This is a challenging message for the church. But I can't leave it there. There may be one under the sound of my voice that don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about, the one that loved you <laughs> before you loved yourself. Hallelujah. The one who gave his life, and he's the only one who gave his life for you. I, I know we say police officers. I know we say soldiers, and we say firemen. And, oh, they gave their life. No, they did not. And let me put it in the proper context. Yes, we honor them in what they did. We honor them. But they didn't give it because guess what? They didn't have the power to control their circumstances. They didn't have the power to stop the bullet or stop the war or stop the fire. Jesus had the power to stop it and laid it down. He laid down his life for you and for me. He loved me and he loved you that much. My friend, if you want to know my best friend today, I love to introduce to you him, introduce you to him. His name, his name, his name is Jesus. And there's two things that you must do. First, you must recognize your condition. 
You are a sinner and you need a savior. His name is Jesus. You were born into sin. He took your place so that you could have a right in relationship with God. So the first thing, you must recognize your condition and ask him to forgive you of your sins. He says he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will do it if you ask. Sincerely ask. Secondly, you must believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not with the head knowledge. Because anybody will choose heaven over hell when I begin to describe it. When I talk about hell, a place of burning and and torture and pain and life without God, nobody wants to go there. But when I talk about heaven and singing praises and streets of gold and and beautiful and, and no more pain and suffering, everybody wants to go to heaven. If you have if you have <laughs> if you have common sense, you will choose heaven over hell. But that's a head knowledge. You need a heart knowledge. And what I mean, I'm not talking about the blood pump that pumps blood through your body. I'm talking about the inner man that provokes you to change and gives you a desire to live for Christ forevermore. And you must believe, yes, he was born of a virgin. Yes, he lived approximately around 33 years. Yes, he went to Golgotha's Hill and died and was placed in a borrowed tomb. But that's not how the story ends. Three days later, the stone is rolled away and my Savior lives sitting on the right hand of God waiting to return. If you believe it with your heart, then my God says he'll come in. He'll be with you forevermore. He'll be your best friend. He's been mine. A friend that sticketh closer than the brother and a friend that loveth all at all times. His name, ha, his name is Jesus. And I want to introduce him to you today. If you don't know him, this is your moment. This is your time to make the greatest decision that you'll ever make in your life, and that is to make Jesus your choice. This is your moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe somebody's praying right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. The angels rejoice in heaven. Last but not least, I don't preach a rose petal gospel, and I want y'all to understand this and be real clear. Life ain't going to be perfect just because you made this decision. I'm sorry. The Bible doesn't say so. You will go through trials and tribulation. That is life itself. God's promise to you in this world that in this word is that you will not have to go through those things alone. He will be right there with you. And when you look back on those tough times in life, you'll see only one set of footprints, and those were the times that he carried you through. It's your moment. It's your time. Please let us know at the Brown Grove family. Please let us know. We want to pray with you. We want to put you on our prayer list. We want to give you scriptures. We want to rejoice with you because you've made this wonderful decision to choose Jesus. But we will send you to any Bible-believing church because this is not about church membership. This is about your relationship with the living God. So we'll send you anywhere that's teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll find a church near you. So you can grow. So you can do God's will. And yes, bless somebody else. My friend, mm, you got to get out the house. Your place of comfort. And you got to move. Because God has dropped the mantle at your feet. In 2024, there is somebody 
God has called you to be a blessing too. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. I thank you for your word. Your word says that, you're, that it will not return void, but it will find its lodging place. Touch right now, God. Touch the, our hearts. That God, as you've called us, that we will continue to move to do your will. Because, yes, we do want to hear those wor words. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. God, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing right now. <laughs> I thank you for just being God all by yourself. Hmm. You're worthy to be praised. And yes, God, in 2024, that all that's going on around us, I still have great expectation. <laughs> you know why? Because you live and you sit on the throne. And when the appointed time comes, you will return. God, I thank you. I praise you. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I love you, Brown Grove. I love you, family. I love you, friends. Now go. Go and bless somebody else. Because my Savior, he lives. Hallelujah. 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 My Savior, he lives. <laughs>